Okay, it's noon central standard time or central daylight time. Uh, I think it's daylight time right now. Anyway, welcome to the pantry party. It's a weekday, it's noon central time, and that's when you know it's the pantry party. Hey guys, thanks for joining in. Uh, today we have a very special, very special episode of the pantry party. I don't know if you saw the ad in Instagram, um, but, or, you know, my post, I guess it's not an ad, but kind of like an ad, whatever. I don't know if you saw, but basically what today is on the pantry party is called Double Trouble Tuesday. What? Uh, it's not going to be every Tuesday, but this Tuesday is Double Trouble Tuesday because we have my friend Kendra, who is a chef who we're gonna go in her pantry, give her some ideas, and then we're gonna flip the script, and she's gonna come in my pantry. I organized my pantry actually this morning. It was a great reason to do so, and I never felt better about myself. Okay. Uh Good point, double check. Hi, ah, yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, I, can I hear you there now? We go. Okay, fine. Um, hello. I wore this shirt. I was going to wear green because I know it's your favorite color, but I decided it to is. wear this shirt instead. Spice Girl. <gasps> I love it. It's even I figured, better than wearing green. So I figured. I was like, oh, you know, this. I, I don't usually, like, fret about what I'm going to wear for the guests on the pantry <laughs> party show, but today I was, like, fretting about it. Because uh, I wanted it to be just right, because this is the specialistest uh, episode of the Pantry Party yet. <laughs> Seriously, I because, love it. Uh, this is dub Double Trouble Tuesday. I mean, it was your I brainchild, know. actually. I can't uh, wait to get I'm, into your I, you pantry. Know, mm -hmm. Well, and I disclosed before I brought you on um, that I did take uh, a little bit of time this morning to reorganize. I don't know why it took me... So long to do this because literally it took me about 20 minutes it took it didn't mm -hmm. take any time it wasn't like mm -hmm. I, it, you'll see it's not like i have tons of stuff and i had to like organize everything right. but i i said to myself i'm gonna throw nothing away because this is not a time to be throwing things away i'm gonna throw Perfect. nothing away but all i'm gonna do is just start thinking about like grouping things like all mm -hmm. of this is baking like why mm -hmm. would i have it on three different shelves well because over time i just shove stuff i'm like shove it shove it totally wait wait and it's not just me shoving stuff. It's also my husband <laughs> shoving stuff. So let's just say Chris. <laughs> some of us shove more than others, and I'm not going to say who. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, so thank you for the in inspiration to do Double Trouble Tuesday because oh. I don't think I would have ever organized my pantry. And for 20 minutes, I feel mm -hmm. like totally – I was taking a shower after I did it, and I was like, I feel light as can be. <laughs> I feel so great. Like, who mm -hmm. knew that mm -hmm. I did, my pantry was bugging me so much? I didn't know. I know. Well, I don't, it, it's like anything else that you reorganize, it declutters. It declutters your brain. It, I mean, it declutters, yeah. obviously, your pantry, too, but your brain. Yeah. And it just well. makes it easier when you want to cook. Because I feel like cooking is stressful anyway. So if you can just open it up and see things that, you know, and it's not shoved in the back. I mean, I looked at, wait till you see my pantry. I have so many ingredients because I'm just always testing recipes. I have 1,000 bags that are like three quarters full or one quarter full or like clipped with a little thing and tucked away. I, you know, it's, it, for me, it's so hard to organize, but I try. Because you have all the things. Basically, you have all the things. Well, so I, did, I did post that you are a personal chef, but before we get started on legit doing our pantry uh, I call it meal storming, our pantry meal storming, Double Trouble like Tuesday. It. Yes. Uh, why don't you just tell everybody who's not familiar with your uh, beauty and genius uh, who you are, what you do, a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. So um, my name is Kendra Peterson. I'm a chef, and I own a company in Chicago, actually just down the street from Dawn, uh, from where she is, which makes me happy. Uh, it's called Drizzle Kitchen. And we provide private chef services for families either that have food allergies, which is my expertise now, um, any sort of specific dietary need, because I, I'm not a dietitian, but I have the same background as Dawn. So we're able to work with their dietitians, we're able to work with their doctors, anyone they need to, um, to make sure that they're getting nutritious food that tastes good, that's not boring, that everyone wants to eat. So it's really fun. We go into their house once a week and we make whatever they need. I mean, it's everything from like pancakes for the kids in the morning to power balls for them to have as an after school snack and then maybe for mom and dad to take for after their workout we really we really do everything and it's so much fun because I feel like 
I, my clients personally, I feel like I'm part of their family because I'm, I'm providing them food, which I think we all know now more than ever is such a source of comfort and such a source of love. So it is. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, so drizzle kitchen, your mm -hmm. company, Yep. uh, you are a personal chef. So you go into people's houses, cook mm -hmm. things, but your niche, I mean, here's the thing. You can't turn your head one way or another without business people and boss babes talking about what's your niche? Right. What's your niche? <laughs> totally. It's like, um, actually, I do think that yesterday I may have created a niche for myself. That's another oh, show. I'm excited I don't, about I mean, this. I think about this every other day. Anyway, mm -hmm. your niche, though, is really, it's a very special niche. I mean, yeah. so you are avoiding for all of your clients, right? The mm -hmm. top eight allergens and then whatever else on top of those? Uh, it, de it depends on what allergies they have. So okay. so the way that our business works, it's myself and then seven, seven chefs that work with me. We go into their home specifically to make sure that everything is safe. If you have a commercial kitchen, you just can't make sure that it's you know totally safe for everybody because everyone has different allergies. So we do, I, I would say like 30% of our clients don't have allergies. They just want to eat really nutritiously dense food. Uh, and then the other 70% are, it's debilitating, you know, like they can't take certain airlines because they're not safe for them because they won't allow them extra time to clean things or make announcements. It's, I have so many stories of things that my clients can't do. And especially right now, it's actually really scary for them because all of the food allergic safe brands at the grocery store, everything is sold out. So with everyone hoarding, they're all hoarding all of this food. And so for them, it's not even a matter of just being able to get food at the grocery store it's being able to get food that's not going to kill them at the grocery yeah. store. So it's real. Yeah. This is a super serious time for them. Super scary. I did see that somewhere mm -hmm. posted is like, if you can avoid like certain wick items, like yes. for women, infant and children, Sick. try not yeah. to buy those things to keep it. But I didn't see something about yeah. this. Like if there's certain allergy friendly uh, foods yeah. that maybe try and switch to a different brand, if you totally don't need it right now for people who really, really need it. That's right. interesting. I kind of mm -hmm. didn't think about that. So thanks for the uh, shift of perspective there. You know what You're I mean? You're welcome. Hey, how did you get into this? I never, I mean, I, we're friends. By the way, Kendra <laughs> is a friend of mine. Um, she's one of the most, you'll find out. She's one of the most upbeat, positive friends that I have. And uh, so why I live where I live is sort of single white female-esque, I guess, would you say? Yes. Um, I, I uh, did an inventory of my life uh, a few years ago, and I was like, you know what? Um, I don't like where I live right now. And I was yeah. like, whose life do I like? <laughs> like, I started looking at like all the people I know. I was like, who is living a lifestyle that I want to live and where do they live? Right. And so I was like, Kendra, she has this fun life where she's like going to restaurants and she's like in this <laughs> cool area. I was like, I got to ask her about it. So I moved a few years ago to the West Loop because of you. So we're, we're good friends, gal pals. And, um, you know, one of the things that I really don't know, actually, and I know a lot about you, mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, <laughs> very juicy things. You do know juicy things. Um, but uh, I digress. Uh, but I don't actually know how you got this niche of uh, food allergies as being a That's personal funny. chef, particularly for food allergies. Yeah. How did well, that come about? I'm surprised that we haven't talked about that. So yeah. I... Um, I graduated school with my degree in nutrition, but I didn't go the dietetics route because I just wanted to cook. I didn't want to do the hospital thing. I didn't want to work. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to do that part. And I worked for William Sonoma for a couple of years. I opened up stores for them. I started culinary programs for them kind of in the Midwest. And when I moved back from Ohio after doing some stores, uh, my sisters were just having babies at that time. And so I would start cooking for their kids like for the birthday parties and all their friends would come and our neighbors would come and our family. And one of my sister's friends asked if I would, she's like, I love your food. I love your energy. Can you just cook some meals for our family? And I was like, P yes, pe people will pay me to do this. Yes, I will totally do it. So that's how the business started. And then over a few years when I was able to not pick and choose my clients, but I think when I was exposed to a wider group of people, I was contacted by a woman whose son was diagnosed with pre-autism. So for those of you who don't know, you can't be diagnosed with autism until you're 24 months. At least at that time, that's what it was. I'm not sure what it is now. And she was taking every approach from, you know, therapy to doctors to food. And she got him tested for food allergies and food sensitivities. And then they reached out to me to see if I would come in and help because the food was ripping their family apart. Like the dad didn't want to cook anymore because he didn't really believe in it. And he didn't know what to make for them. All the kids were eating like gluten-free hot dogs and rice chips because they just didn't know what to feed them. So we came up with a plan to first make foods that was safe for their son to have. 
then incorporate that maybe into family meals, then do cooking classes for the dad. And it, I usually can't even tell the story without getting emotional because I'm, I'm like, how, how, how am I fighting back tears right now? I'm like, like you legit, you didn't only yeah. save this child's life, right? Yeah. You saved a family. Like that is, it that was again, really amazing. Chills, power of food, like, yeah. and you don't really realize also, I mean, how interesting it is when people really listen to the signs of the universe and mm -hmm. let that guide their career like that, right? Yeah. Like, how very, very cool that you were like, okay, I want to cook. And somebody said, oh, you want to do this? And you were like, yes, this seems, <laughs> seems fun. It's like yeah. what I say all the time, like following breadcrumbs of joy. Yes. And that is how you get a good career is yes. like, oh, I don't, there's a little breadcrumb. I'm going to try that. I'm going to test that. I'm going to mm -hmm. do that. And you did. And now look at, you have this specialty that is not only, um, you know, super needed for people to have, you know, good, healthy food, but like right. the specialty of you right. being so able to, do delicious food with these sensitivities. I think it's just, it's awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. Thanks for being a guest on the Pentry party. Um, Thanks for having so me. Here's how it runs down. After we learned about your boss babedness, which we just did, <laughs> um, I like to sort of ask if there's anything that is about to go bad in your kitchen or something that you've had for a while that you, as a chef, you know what to do with these things, but you may are like, Oh, no, I like this. inspiration. I like, I like other ideas because we, we get stuck too sometimes. So oh, it's true. I mean, it's true. And no matter how many like cookbooks I've written or articles, mm -hmm. recipes or whatever, it's yep. like, you know, yeah, you do sort of get stuck. Where do you look for inspiration when you do get stuck? I think that's a very good question because a lot of people ask me that. Um, well, I mean, it is my specialty. Hosting abilities are just like <laughs> pouring out of me. So <laughs> thank you for your acknowledgement. You're welcome. Um, so I, God, I subscribe to pretty much every food magazine. I have, I, I think I order at least a cookbook a week. And really? It's, yeah, I love cookbooks. Well, I'm a terrible reader. Like if I go on vacation, I bring cookbooks with me or I bring like the last book that I took on vacation was Dr. Walter Longo, The Longevity Diet. It was his book. Like yeah. I don't read, I don't read novels. I, I flip through cookbooks and I read them like, like people read novels, I guess. And I just, I love them. The other thing I do that I love to mention to people, if you have a recipe that you've made from a cookbook, the day you make it, write that date down. Because then it's really fun when you go back through the cookbook and you're like, oh, yeah, I did make that. And then I leave little notes in there because I have cookbooks from my mom and she died when I was eight. But I have her cookbooks and I have handwritten notes of hers in there. So it's just like mm -hmm. I, they're just sweet, special, fun things, whether it's for yourself or your kids or whoever. I think it's a really, really fun way to, um, I don't know, look at recipes, find your recipes. And I re revisit cookbooks. I mean, every, probably every couple of weeks because you forget there's so many incredible recipes. Yeah, we got a shout out that somebody was like, yeah, I love cookbooks too. Right. Um, yeah. Okay, but here's, this is serious. So you have all of these cookbooks, you're looking through them, da 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 da, da. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you do with all these cookbooks? They're just piled up and you randomly will go over to one and pull it yes. out and look at it? Yes. I, we have a whole wall of bookshelves and they range from art to architecture to about 50% cookbooks. And they just keep piling up. I will say I do... I do the magazines. I get rid of those about every six months I go through and I'm like, eh, we don't need this. Eh, I'll keep that one. So I do kind of sift out the magazines, but the cookbooks, I, they're it's my happy place. So I'm happy. To I have, love that. I'm happy to be surrounded by them. Yeah. I think that is, again, you know, when you think about like being passionate about something and yeah. I got my career with the advice of do what for a career, what you do in your spare time, right? Yes. So yes. it's the best advice for people. It's like, okay, what do you do in your spare time? No matter how ridiculous it is, you can make a career out of it. So if uh, my ridiculousness was like, um, I love to exercise on my rollerblades. <laughs> uh, I love to hang out in the health food store. Mm -hmm. And I love when my drunk roommates come back and I shove tofu, uh, shepherd's yes. pie in their face. And they love it. And I was mm -hmm. like, what could I do mm -hmm. with these uh, passions? You know? Mm -hmm. And so like, I have a career out of that. You're like, in totally. my spare time, I just like to read cookbooks for fun. <laughs> and it's like, look at what you've become, you know? So anyway, I feel like those are, um, you know, even though this is not a business show, I do feel like the amount of knowledge that comes on here of boss babes of like, oh, that's totally. so inspirational. The women you oh met on the show are really, really interesting. And I think it's oh cool, especially right now when we have the time and everyone's kind of revisiting what's going on. I think it's really interesting to hear how things started. 
And, uh, and this agree. is not glamorous. Like for people who are listening, thinking they want to start their own thing. <laughs> great. Amazing. Do it. But please know, I don't, I mean, I, I was eating, I don't even know, lettuce and water for the first year, <laughs> you know, I had no money, but I loved it so much. And here I am. So that's, I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So thanks for, we digressed into how you find inspiration and really, mm -hmm. uh, you know, magazines and tons of cookbooks is very analog of you. It's mm -hmm. very like old timey. I know. And, Wait, where do you um, find inspiration when you're writing, oh, like please. when you're doing stuff? Here's what it is. Me, it's all Google images. I am a visual, oh, yes. visual person. I, That's a good idea. I cannot believe how visual of a person I am. Like, I, I didn't know yeah. this about myself until really. It's like, that I can look sense. at words, and then mm -hmm. they just, like, slur around. And it's like, blah. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> I'll just type in corn. I've got frozen corn in my freezer. It's like corn. Corn this recipe. Is a good idea. And then I don't look at the recipes of anybody. I just look at their pictures and I'm mm -hmm. like, girl, look at where she put her corn. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm in. I gotta do that. So I, I definitely will say Google images of whatever I'm trying to, or even something I crave. Like I'll be like the other day, I really was like, I'm craving nachos. So I was like, different kind of nachos you know mm -hmm. whatever and then I started seeing pictures of different kinds of nachos I was totally. like oh, Mediterranean nachos seems fun and I didn't see somebody Ooh, call it Mediterranean nachos I didn't really see that but I was like the pictures inspired that so anyway mm -hmm. um food totally. inspiration comes from everywhere yes. uh but I like that we both have our own little thing so anyway is there anything in your house that is about to go bad that you want to eat before uh it goes bad or Something that you haven't had in your cabinet or freezer, freezer that you're like, ah, I haven't used this in a long time. I'd like to use it. Or like you said, that right. you have like this little bit of something left that you're like, I would like to get rid of this bag, totally. you know, or whatever. Um, I do actually. And it's funny because every time I go in the pantry, I'm like, God, I got to do something with those. I have the most beautiful tinned fish. Now, for people who don't know what that is. It, we spend a lot of time in Europe. My boyfriend is European, so we are there often. And this is a totally, totally common pantry staple in most European houses. It's like beautiful fish that's preserved in oil. And sometimes it has other spices in it. You know, like from Spain, there might be Calabrian chilies in there, or there might be like Greek oregano. They're, they're awesome, awesome little things to have. And I just keep forgetting that they're in there. So... I'm happy okay. to show, I have like eight different kinds. I'm happy yeah. to show you them. We got to get in there. That was, I was raising my hand. I was like, <laughs> get me in there to see okay. tin fish. I want to okay. see that All tin right. fish. Right, and uh, you are speaking my language also because um, I'm really on a mission to eat more fish. And so this is, this could be a big inspiration for me. Okay. Here we go. Well, you're going to see, you're going to see the chef's pantry. This is just like part of it ah, chef's all pantry our all our stuff that's great mm, do you have all the is, things all right so here's the fish does each shelf have like a meaning to you like this is like when I reorganized mine uh today uh I was like okay I want to have um, a whole row for my dog <laughs> and then like a whole row of things I drink or whatever yeah. I tried to organize like that is like when you go into yours is there like grains are all together or like anything or a they, chef's pantry is just a conglomerate. They were when I cleaned each shelf and vacuumed each shelf and reorganized it about five months ago. But now, not so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to be clear it's, it's about hard. my pantry makeover. There was no cleaning involved. So just oh. so you know. You Nothing wrong with that. Organization, no Nothing cleaning. wrong with that. Nothing anyway. Wrong with that. I get real crazy, and I always I wipe everything down, and I vacuum everything out. Always. I love that. So, How often do you feel like you reorganize or and tidy up your pantry? Like, just is there just a breaking point, or do you do it? Like yes, there's a, a breaking point. There's yeah. a breaking point. It's usually, I, I'm like, oh, why is this sticky? And then it just grosses <laughs> me out, and I have to, like, control all delete the whole thing. So. I love it. I love that. control all delete the whole thing. Yep. Um, okay, show right, me that I'm fish. Gonna, that looks fun. Okay. It's actually really beautiful fish. It's a really great company. All right. So we've got some wild cockles. Oh my gosh. I've seen that. Right. We've got yes. spicy wild sardines, um, regular small sardines. Okay. Now and if I was in your mussels, like you. <gasps> mussels. I know. In an olive oil and vinegar. Yes. What? More sad. So many sardines. Oh, we have octopus. Look. Okay, please. Octopus, um, Spanish think... olive oil, and then bonito, which is a beautiful tuna. It's the, like the most oh beautiful tuna. Yeah. That's, so that's okay. Inspiration. And can we just say super chefy like that? How you talk <laughs> about food. 
<laughs> your passion, like you're just, you're so juicy and like oh, thank uh, you. passionate about it when you speak about it. It's just <laughs> sexy, actually. Like, All right. Oh. I'm going <laughs> to oh. I'm gonna exit the pantry because it is a, it's a Fine. room. Thank, and it's thank you. Thank you for uh, showing us your pantry, showing yeah. us your beautiful tin fish. And I think your sister was on hashtagging oh, brain food. She brain won. food brain food mm -hmm. um because that is one of the things we were at um an event together and mm -hmm. the speaker was talking mm -hmm. about how many of you eat you know mussels and octopus and whatever mm -hmm. and your the bivalves like, the bivalves uh, yeah she was yeah so <laughs> your hand the whole time he's like how many of you eat clams how many of you eat mussels how many Me. you were just was the whole thing and everyone was like oh geez like i really need to get this more in my diet yeah. So basically, twice after that talk we were at, two times after, I sought out happy hours around town to eat $1 Ooh, smart. <laughs> I like that. So, so that's how I interpreted his uh, presentation of Eat More yeah. Bivalve. It was happy hour. Totally. Months. And so there totally. you have it. Um, but I actually really like the idea of having things like the mussels and the clams and stuff like that in a tin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how I think we're going to get our inspiration of what to do with those is really look to when you're in Europe, how do they eat them? Because that's the answer, right? However, right. they're eating them is what we want to be doing. So right. how would you, how would somebody use those? Um, often, you know, in Spain, when they have tapas, which for anyone who's not been to Spain or isn't familiar with tapas, they usually have these bars where often you just get, I mean, not right now, um, but usually you get a toothpick or a mul multiple toothpicks and you kind of just go around to, it's almost like a buffet and they're all these like little itty bitty bites and you just put them on your plate and tinned fish is often one of the things that's there. Um, in Italy, they put it in pasta a lot, yes. a lot. That's so, uh, we had uh, a mutual uh, gal pal Gina on, and I forced yes. her to put tuna in her pasta yes, with I lots of it, olive oil. It looks yeah. beautiful. It looks beautiful, and then she had you know, greens in it. So, mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm, I'm loving that idea of like the greens and the tin fish and the pasta. But I think the idea of doing a Spanish tapas night. Yeah. And every time I say tapas in my family, I feel like my mom and dad are like, "Are you saying topless?" <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> no, I'm saying tapas, tapas. Um, I mean, it's close. You got to give it to them. Like it's yes. tapas, tapas, yes. you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so what else could I put with that? So say you're going to see in my cabinet, I have sardines. And okay. oh, I'm, I'm intimidated by them, honestly. I mean, I was pushing myself for a while to eat them, whatever. Yeah. Chris burned out. He ate a can every single day for like seven days. And then he's like, I can't eat any more sardines. I can't. I couldn't even do that. Sardines. <laughs> I, I use sardines. I know I usually use them in salad dressings because oh. you, can, you can crush them. And so you just get that really beautiful flavor, but you don't get the, you're not biting into a sardine. Or it's amazing in pasta. If you just okay. chop up a bunch of garlic and some shallots or onion and saute that in olive oil, and then you, um, again, like make a paste with the sardines, then you put that in there, mix it with pasta and some like butter toasted breadcrumbs. Okay. I, so here's, I'm like this. Uh, uh. <laughs> so you're saying basically like you're making a fish puree, like mashed up baby kind of. food sardines? Yeah, kind of. What? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm not against this. I'm loving this. Let's think about this. How many sardines, if I was going to make, say, a box of pasta for me and Chris, uh, yeah. for two people, how would I use a whole tin of sardines smashed I up? I don't need to use a whole tin. That's a lot of sardines. I mean, I wanna, you know I better than, I'm trying to think of fish. how many portions, like how many servings that is. I don't know. Let's, let's say it's uh, four. I think half. I think just half do half then. Yeah. Okay. This, I mean, it seems weird to me to mash up fish to be baby food, but I know I get, but you, the and you know, it doesn't even flavor. need to be, it doesn't need to be like puree style, but you just want okay. it to like maybe a little coarse sea salt that helps okay. you kind of mash it. I love this. I love this. Okay. <laughs> I'm putting that on our grocery list because I actually, what I would like is a uh, noodle, like brown rice, uh, yes. fettuccine. Do you know yes. what I'm saying? Like, yes. I want it to be like that so mm -hmm. I can wiggle my fork and ooh, yeah. eat it like oh, that. Oh, and finish yes. it with capers. Finish oh, it with I have something capers. really salty and briny. Like, make it crazy garlicky, like almost spicy garlicky. And then finish it with the crunchy butter-toasted breadcrumbs, like panko. And then some of the capers, like chopped up. It's okay. one of my and favorite pastas. 
I love this idea. So um, now I'm going to need to figure out where are all my vegetables coming from. Would I could I put some zoodles in there, perhaps for vegetables? Totally or, put zoodles in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or peas or, are a really beautiful thing to throw in there. Okay, I'm arugula. feeling like. Okay, here's the yes. I love the idea of arugula and or depending on what I can find in the store. Uh, next time we go, I'm not making this anytime soon because we're waiting to go to the store. But yes. uh, zoodles, um, arugula. Or mm -hmm. I could just have a little thing of pasta with a salad on the side, like a simple salad. Totally. Yeah. Okay, I love that. Now, if we were going to make you a Spanish tapas bar, because I'd like to, that's mm -hmm. my homework. I got mine. That, that's what pantry party is all about. Did I, I get a it. meal? I got a meal. You, I would like you to do a Spanish tapas night with okay. those mussels. But what yeah. else would you put with that for a, like, that Spanish tapas feel? Like, how could you make a dinner out of that? I think with the mussels, what we could do is more along the lines of Spanish tapas is do, um, they make, they often will saute potatoes with smoky paprika and olive oil and garlic and have that on the side. Because the mussels, I feel like I want them warm. I don't want them room temperature. I okay, I want so them a little you're bit warm. warm. Okay, yeah, so I feel like them. I can saute, I can make the potatoes that way. And then once they're done cooking, add those mussels in so they just get the warmth, like the residual warmth that the potatoes give off. So not actually cook them, just warm. Okay, them. I like warm. I like this idea, though, it's like a, like mm -hmm. a more of a, a board, more of a tapas board. So it's like warm yes. mussels, and then it's yes. like warm paprika potatoes. What mm -hmm. would be a vegetable you could put with that? Uh, roasted red peppers is really very common there. Because that's, so. that's what I'm trying mm -hmm. to get, a European vibe. Roasted mm -hmm. red peppers, you, would you buy those already roasted or you probably would make them yourself? You? We have so many peppers in the fridge. I'm just going to char those babies on the stove. It's so easy to do. If you want to do it, everybody, all you do is take the whole pepper, put it on top of your stove. If you have a gas stove or a grill, you want the flame touching it. You're literally going to burn the outside. It should look black. So turn it so the outside... Oh. And my sister said she wants an Aperol spritz with this tapas. Oh, of course. <laughs> good, good call, lady. Good call. I mean... Yes, Okay, so take your peppers and just char them all over. They're going to be totally black. If you have a paper bag, then turn your stove off, pull the pepper off the flame, put it in a paper bag, and seal it. What that does is it helps create um, some moisture separation between the actual skin and the flesh. And then you just rub it off with a paper towel. And, and then I eat that. Yes. So okay, you fine. Obviously cut the core out and slice it and whatnot. But all it's right. So, good. so fine. So I've got a little bit of warm mussels with that olive oil. I've got yep. paprika potatoes, a little bit off to yep. the side. I've like got it. a roasted, some roasted red pepper. Any other vegetable common in Europe for a sort of a Spanish tapas board like that? Because you know, is, you and I are both me. vegetable. In, I know. Like I'm. I'm always like, how many vegetables can I eat at every meal? Um, in Spain, they don't. I mean, there's not salads. You know, they'll do salads. Um, okay. So just, but simple greens, just plain, simple greens, uh, really beautiful Spanish olive oil, some sea salt and pepper, maybe some Ooh. lemon. Artichokes. Oh, artichokes. Yeah. That's a good one. The only like little baby ever... artichokes, like tinned artichokes. That was a good call. A, t a tinned artichoke. I sometimes yeah. buy them in the can marinade yeah, yeah, yeah. or uh -huh. frozen artichokes. Hard. Yes. Yes, actually, and you know what I've seen at Whole Foods that I've used before, everybody? It is a grilled artichoke heart that is, like, vacuum-packed. It's in the produce section. It's – they're super delicious. This they're is super fun. good. Okay, I love this. I, this feels very Euro to me. Mm -hmm. This feels very mm -hmm. Spanish topic. I like it. So, and it, it's very you. It's like, what meal would we get <laughs> for us Kendra to make? Some sort of European-style I know. Fancy, it makes me happy. Elegant. You it know, I love happy. it. All right. So you, you win. You got your meal from the party pantry. I win. I got my party pantry. I think um, that you, we should virtual cocktail hour while we're both having our pantry party dinners. I love that. I think that is a lovely idea. And mm -hmm. I do know I'm very mindful of the time because uh, Kendra at Drizzle Kitchen is her handle. Uh, she has a live cooking demo that's happening at 1 p.m. Central time. Well, so it's right. I mean, it's in a half an hour. So what we need to do now is flip the script because we got some great ideas. I need to bring you in my pantry because I actually have two things that I need. Oh, some, tell me some chef Kendra love on. Okay. okay so see. you ready, you ready to go? Because I have, I will say in the history of my being, I've never had anyone in my pantry, fridge or freezer. So yes. all right, let's go, let's go together. All right. Um, all right, a quick stop with the good vibes. Good okay. vibes, people. That's All what right, we need here right we now. go. 
So I'm, I'm coming out of my home office into uh, the pantry, which by the way, Chris is the one who's responsible for doing the pantry because this used to be a coat closet and uh, he hired somebody to come and uh, do the pantry. Yeah. So ready? I'm, oh, wait. I'm ready. I, wait, hang on. I'm going to do it like opposite. Yeah. Oh, wait. Hang on. Did I do it? No. It's still on you, babe. Oh. On the, it should be on the very bottom on the right. Yeah. Oh, right, here we go. Oh, boy. I touched something else. This is user error. Blah, blah, blah. Hang on. Let me get rid of that. Oh, boy. Wait, no, we're, you're fine. Oh, we see it. We okay, see it? okay. Yeah, we're okay. all good. This is, this is, so this is what I organized. Not cleaned, but organized <gasps> today. Nicely organized. Wait, wait. Look at that. Nicely Ooh, organized. Yes. Isn't that nice? I like it. That does okay, look good. Okay, so that uh, good. Bottom, bottom shelf is puppy time. That's all uh, puppy time. Yes. Uh, next to the bottom shelf is baking time. It's all mm -hmm. like sugars, flowers, baking mixes, and then like seeds, like flax seeds, chia seeds, cocoa powder. Perfect. Um, this is my can section of beans and fish and pastas okay. and then some other things. This is like breakfasty stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, this is like where I keep the garlic, onions, sweet yeah. potatoes things. Perfect. And those are like our crackery snack things type. Well, I mean crackery things but also like taco shells and this is this is what i feel like should be something that's crazy this entire top section is just beverages it's just <laughs> drinks it's every kind of tea every, my dandy blend like every sort of thing Girl, there. so, so i have a whole cabinet is. full of tea legitimately oh. okay so i thought i was weird for having a no. whole shelf but okay no right. no so here's here's oh. where you're coming in okay we're she also knows. gonna go oh hey can <gasps> we say hi to our uh, urban bourbonist Look at Hi, him working hard. There he is. Oh, I can't really see you because you're in the, um, you know, sun or whatever. And he's we drinking out of a we can urban, urban bourbon. He says, cheers, everybody. And he has, <laughs> of course, he has a bourbon um, <laughs> coffee mug. All right, thanks. And they're over there is my puppy over there. Um, okay, so we started this a little analog old fashioned. Um, oh, I like list. that. So that we could make sure that when we need something, we put it on there. So we're not going to the store as much. Smart. My freezer, I organize. Look at that. Smart. This is like all my protein stuff. And this is like brown rice, uh, veggies, mm -hmm. frozen veggies, da da da, mm -hmm. quick smoothies. Uh, all of my fruits, like zucchini, apples, uh, frozen Great. bananas, frozen berries, uh, nuts, uh, breads. Okay. Yep. And then yep. look at fridge. Bridges here. Oh my this gosh, all, so organized. That's all of my puppy's medicine right there. That's Aww. keeping my baby alive. I love it. Mr. Uh, Peanut. And we even put uh, chicken broth in his uh, water so he'll drink. All of our condiments. Uh, mm -hmm. There's uh, some drinks, uh, sparkling waters, thawing uh, wild salmon and chicken, uh, some wraps, and our dinner leftovers wow. from yesterday, which was sweet potatoes, chicken, and kale. Uh, okay, so here's what I'm doing. That right there. Mm -hmm. That is celery that's been way long in my fridge for like okay. weeks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make celery juice out of it because it's flimsy and old. Yep. So yep. that's going to be, become celery juice. Yep. Promise myself today that I'm going to do that. So if you have rotting celery in your fridge, make celery juice. And mm -hmm. I just add it to a blender with water. Mm -hmm. uh, then this is our cheese drawer and like hummus and stuff. Our little fruit container. And this guy, he's been with me forever. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Isn't he cute? So I just feel like you need to have like little fun things in your fridge to make he's it. so cute. Like, you know, like a fancy little uh, thing. This has always been like this. I didn't really organize my fridge because, I mean, there's not got that much. That's uh, then, Okay, I'd like you to look at my fridge now. Since and then we, yours is so, so darn organized. Well, I mean, it's not, there's not a ton in it. It's all the stuff. We, we don't want to waste anything. <laughs> oh, this that's great. Nice. Sanity of our I fridge. I love it. Oh my god! But see, you you're always recipe testing. Look at that. So much food, and this is all cheese because it's like a European house. So cheese and cured meats. Oh, isn't that awesome? This is all it's of our beautiful. produce down here. In this, hey, in this so asking you real quick, why would we not put a little bit of cheese and meat? On, well, here I'll flip my camera too while I talk to you. How come yeah. I wouldn't put a little cheese and meat on your Spanish tapas board? Oh, totally can. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, come on, girl. Like, that's sure. perfect. You have a perfect uh, Spanish tapas board as an assignment from the pantry party. <laughs> um, okay, so here's what I need your help with, all right? Two things I told you. 
Yes. Why do I have three cans of pinto beans? Would be the first one. <laughs> I um, don't know. And then the next thing. Wait. Oh, the next thing actually is the sweet potato from last night. Um. Okay. So it's a huge sweet potato. I'm kind of sick of eating it that way. Uh, okay. So I'm wondering if you have uh, any different kinds other than just eating a potato. You know, like I had it mashed last night with kale, with garlic, kale, and the chicken. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if there's another thing I could do with it. Like, have you ever made sweet potato brownies? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, I have idea. <laughs> um, yes, sweet potato it. brownies, yes, delicious. But what I'm thinking, which is very fun, would be okay. to make some little sweet potato pinto bean poppers. Oh, so it yeah. seems very interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so you're trying to get rid of both of my things in one foul swoop. My that is uh, my huge baked sweet potato, yes. and at least one can of my pinto beans. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is correct. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to chop up or put it in a food processor, half an onion, okay. a couple cloves of garlic, okay. and then you're going to throw those pinto beans in there. Okay. And you're going to make almost like a paste. Okay. Then I know you have coconut flour. So uh, almonds, do not have coconut almonds. Flour? I have mm. almond flour. I have a green banana flour. I do. I'm going to go work. See. So that I work. Or do you flour. have, do you have breadcrumbs? Uh, no. Uh, I have green banana flour. I have cornmeal. I have mm. whole, and I have almond flour. I think almond flour would actually probably be the best. Okay. Yeah. Probably be the best. So you are going to, um, chop all that up. If you, if you don't like raw onion, you can saute the onion a little bit first. Okay. Cause it won't really cook all the way through. Uh, and then might need to add a little bit of an egg as a binder. I will send you this recipe afterwards. Okay. Uh, you might need a little egg as a binder. And then mash that sweet potato and mix that in there with some cumin. Okay. So you're going to do like a Southwest style little fritter situation. So you make, you're going to make this big bowl of like a batter or a dough. Okay. And then scoop it out into little pieces. And then you can use your cornmeal to kind of coat the outside and pan fry it. Okay, so here's here's where you have sold me. This whole time, I was almost about ready to zone out. I was like, what? This sounds like a mashed baby food scene again. Like, what is she doing to me? No, no. Here's where, here's where everything changed. This is where everything changed. If you say the word fritter to me, you all mm. you need to do is say the word fritter. I should, I'm sorry. I should have said fritter. Okay. If you say fritter, I'm like, yes. fritter, yes, fritter, <laughs> fritter yes. You fritter. say fritter, I say yes. <laughs> Um, I, you know what? Is that not a good book? That should be my next book. You say fritter, I say yes. I say yes, let's. Do I it. mean, it's I, the I best. support. I support your next venture. I like this idea. I do like the idea of of doing some sort of fritter. Mm -hmm. I I feel like I might be obsessed though with using that sweet potatoes in some sort of dessert because I've been uh, uh, last. Last night I was dessert deprived because I ran out of chocolate chips already. Um, I made black bean brownies uh, a couple of nights ago. Yep. So maybe it's like any other thing that I would do with that sweet potato that's uh, sweet. That's sweet. Do you have any coconut cream or coconut milk in your pantry? I have coconut flakes, which I could blend up. Mm. Wouldn't really be quite the same, but because I was thinking that you could do, um, oh, you know what you could do? You could do like some sweet potato nut butter bites. <gasps> mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. This okay. Mm -hmm. So I have a whole thing of almond butter. Mm -hmm. I have the sweet potato, and so I would yes. sort of put it together. Coconut yes. You're oil, gonna or... you're gonna toast some of those coconut flakes. Put oh, them in okay. your blender to get to okay. make like a toasted coconut flour. Okay. And then you're gonna oh. mix that. Yeah. Then you're gonna mix that with your sweet potato and a little bit of nut butter, and then I, do you have any cacao nibs? Yes. Uh, okay. I think I ate those in the brownies. <laughs> All right. Do you have any cocoa powder? <gasps> yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I think what you can, you might maybe want to add monk fruit or a little maple syrup or whatever, but you want to sweeten it up a little bit, but you might not need it because of the sweet potato. Roll it in little balls, like truffle size, and then roll it in cocoa powder. So it's like a, it looks like a truffle. Okay. How great does that sound? I want that as an assignment. I want my sardine pasta as an assignment. I think okay. that's going to be delicious. Mm -hmm. And the black bean or the pinto bean fritters, pinto bean fritters mm -hmm. could be an interesting, okay, here, here. I pinto do, bean, I do bean fritters all the time. I think that could be a very good thing. Like, um, so let's think about it. 
Uh, I have wraps and I have cabbage. So I could have a pinto bean fritter, mm -hmm. uh, like, burrito. Yeah, almost like falafel. Think of it more like falafel. <gasps> Uh -huh. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> now this is a pinto bean fritter is like a falafel. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. I love this. I think this could be very good. And I have, you know what I have? I have avocado lime dressing. So yes. I could have, so I could yes. have my wrap. I could have totally. my pinto bean totally. fritter. I could have yep. my cabbage for my veggie. Cabbage, cabbage, cabbage. And then a ton of yes. I'm a sauce. Oh I my gosh. Sauce. Cabbage is going to be perfect on that. <gasps> I've yes. got three assignments. This is, this is blowing my mind. <laughs> The pantry party it. is a miracle. I'm going to go on record and say what is being done here is just magic. <laughs> I am so excited. Are you excited about your Spanish tapas dinner? I feel I am like excited. that seems perfect. I am excited because I feel like right now we are really, really craving going to visit restaurants, especially our friends' restaurants. And so the fact that we can't do that, I feel like I, I'm trying to make dinner even extra, like more extra special yes. for us at night. And this would be, re this would be really fun. This would be I really love super it. fun. Yeah. Some wine and uh, totally. transporting you to a Spanish yes. uh, or European uh, restaurant. Yes. I love it. Um, yes. You know what? Have you been ordering at all from restaurants? Because we did uh, a couple of nights ago, we ordered from one of our favorite places. Oh, our favorite oh, good. places. We went yeah. to Vec. We had a uh, yes. curbside, you know, pickup or whatever. Love it. Um, and I feel like, you know, we're going to make a point to try and Good. at least do takeout, you know, Good. once uh, every week and a half or something or whatever. Just, you well, know, today like there's, you there's said. a big movement today, actually. It's, it's called the Great National Takeout or the Great Takeout or something. I put, it's oh. on my stories. I posted it on my stories. Uh, and all the restaurants are trying to get as many people as they can to order takeout tonight specifically. But then oh. any time that you can is, is, is obviously very helpful. So okay. hey, are, you know what? You know, I'll check out your stories. Yeah. Uh, and let's actually wrap it up because you have another uh, live to do anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the pantry party already fixed both of our lives. So uh, oh. there's no reason to keep going. I mean, at the end <laughs> of the day, though, um, at Drizzle Kitchen, I'm going to check out your Thank story. You. Thanks. I'm doing homemade I wanna... hummus today. Oh, well, I'm gonna, first I'm going to check out your story because I want to learn about that great American takeout. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go to your story for that. But mm -hmm. then in about 15 minutes, you're going to be doing a live at Drizzle Kitchen making mm -hmm. uh, hummus, as mm -hmm. I prefer to say, hummus. <laughs> hummus. <laughs> you know. Um, and I think it's that's more fun. Right, right? It's a, an important thing because so many people, as you have seen my cabinet, like, bought canned beans and so like right. you know if right. you make well, traditional hummus doesn't or not. need to be made with chickpeas it can be made with really any kind of bean right so, so and i've heard from a lot of people that that's one of the things that's totally gone at the grocery store is hummus if you can't find it yeah oh hummus see yeah. very 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 good i love that mm -hmm. and can number two of my pinto beans is pinto bean hummus which yes. i have a ton of taco shells oh my gosh delicious. wait do you have taco seasoning because taco you can seasoning. make taco hummus Okay, this is done. I mean, we got to get off the line because I have too much stuff to do now. I have too much stuff to do. The pantry party changing lives. Um, so uh, tell us one more time uh, where everybody can find you after we're done here. And I can't thank you enough. Tell, tell, yes. tell. Um, so Drizzle Kitchen is where you can find me. And I do all sorts of crazy live cooking classes. Every day I'm doing them at 1 o'clock. So I'm trying to do some fun, easy things to make, I don't know, our lives a little bit happier in the kitchen these days. So come say hi. Love it. Thank you, Ed Drizzle Kitchen. Kendra, you are Thanks, a dream. Um, I believe we are having a virtual happy hour tonight. So. We are. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. I love you so much, and I'll be checking you. out your hummus uh, right after this. Thanks for Thanks, joining Mama. me at the pantry party. Bye, everybody. Bye, babe. Bye. Um, okay, so we had just the best guest, the best time at Drizzle Kitchen. Uh, my friend Kendra, personal chef. We had ideas coming out everywhere, all around, crazy times. She has assignments. I have assignments. It's just like, this is what the pantry party is all about. It's about taking what we have on hand, right, and making some fun, creative stuff. And so, I mean, this, if this didn't hit it out of the park, I don't know what did. Um, so anyway, you know what? Tomorrow, so that, here, let's wrap today. So today was Double Trouble Tuesday with At Drizzle Kitchen. Kendra was a dream, right? We have so many ideas. And tomorrow, uh, we are going to have, who's tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. I, you know what? I forgot to look ahead of time of, like, who's tomorrow? And I'm so excited. I actually have an outfit picked out already for tomorrow. 
anyway, you're going to have to stay tuned. Maybe this is what I'm doing. You have to stay tuned on my Instagram tomorrow morning when I announce tomorrow's guest. How <laughs> about that? Um, anyway, thank you so much for joining the pantry party. Tell your friends, uh, you know, anytime we can have a viewer or two extra, you know, that's good times. Uh, would you like, before I go, would you like to quickly see uh, my puppy dog? He's right here. He's right here. He's a puppy. He want to tell you, thank you so much for joining the pantry party. Mm -hmm. uh, sending you big love and high immunity vibes and kisses until next time. Mm -hmm.